The Neo-Babylonian Empire, also Second Babylonian Empire was a period of Mesopotamian history which began in 626 BC and ended in 539 BC. During the preceding three centuries, Babylonia had been ruled by their fellow Akkadian speakers and northern neighbors, Assyria. A year after the death of the last strong Assyrian ruler, Ashurbanipal, in 627 BC, the Assyrian Empire spiraled into a series of brutal civil wars. Babylonia rebelled under Nabopolassar. In alliance with the Medes, Persians, Scythians and Cimmerians, they sacked the city of Nineveh in 612 BC, and the seat of empire was transferred to Babylonia for the first time since the death of Hammurabi in the mid-18th century BC. This period witnessed a general improvement in economic life and agricultural production, and a great flourishing of architectural projects, the arts and science. The Neo-Babylonian period ended with the reign of Nabonidus in 539 BC. To the east, the Persians had been growing in strength, and eventually Cyrus the Great conquered the empire. Historical background Babylonia was subject to and dominated by Assyria during the Neo-Assyrian period 911 to 626 BC, as it had often been during the Middle Assyrian Empire 1365 to 1020 BC. The Assyrians of Upper Mesopotamia had usually been able to pacify their southern relations through military might, installing puppet kings, or granting increased privileges. Topic: <laughs> Revival of old traditions. After Babylonia regained its independence, Neo-Babylonian rulers were deeply conscious of the antiquity of their kingdom and pursued an arch-traditionalist policy, reviving much of the ancient Sumero-Akkadian culture. Even though Aramaic had become the everyday tongue, Akkadian was retained as the language of administration and culture. Archaic expressions from 1,500 years earlier were reintroduced in Akkadian inscriptions, along with words in the long and spoken Sumerian language. Neo-Babylonian cuneiform script was also modified to make it look like the old 3rd millennium BC script of Akkad. Ancient artworks from the heyday of Babylonia's imperial glory were treated with near-religious reverence and were painstakingly preserved. For example, when a statue of Sargon the Great was found during construction work, a temple was built for it, and it was given offerings. The story is told of how Nebuchadnezzar II, in his efforts to restore the temple at Sippar, had to make repeated excavations until he found the foundation deposit of Naram Sin of Akkad. The discovery then allowed him to rebuild the temple properly. Neo-Babylonians also revived the ancient Sargonid practice of appointing a royal daughter to serve as priestess of the moon god Sin. Topic. Cultural and economic life Topic. Much more is known about Mesopotamian culture and economic life under the Neo-Babylonians than about the structure and mechanics of imperial administration. It is clear that for southern Mesopotamia, the Neo-Babylonian period was a renaissance. Large tracts of land were open to cultivation. Peace and imperial power made resources available to expand the irrigation systems and to build an extensive canal system. The Babylonian countryside was dominated by large estates, which were given to government officials as a form of pay. The estates were usually managed by local entrepreneurs, who took a cut of the profits. Rural folk were bound to these estates, providing both labor and rents to their landowners. Urban life flourished under the Neo-Babylonians. Cities had local autonomy and received special privileges from the kings. Centered on their temples, the cities had their own law courts, and cases were often decided in assemblies. Temples dominated urban social structure, just as they did the legal system, and a person's social status and political rights were determined by where they stood in relation to the religious hierarchy. Free laborers like craftsmen enjoyed high status and a sort of guild system came into existence, which gave them collective bargaining power. The period witnessed a general improvement in economic life, agricultural production, and a significant increase in architectural projects, the arts and science. <laughs> Neo-Babylonian dynasty <laughs> Dynasty the 11th of Babylon Neo-Babylonian Nabu Aplausur 626-605 BC 
Nabu Kadori USUR 2 605 to 562 BC Amel Marduk 562 to 560 BC Naraglasar 560 to 556 BC Labasi Marduk 556 BC Nabonidus 556 to 539 BC Topic Nabopolassar 626 to 605 BC Topic after the death of Ashurbanipal in 627 BC, the Assyrian Empire began to disintegrate, riven by internal strife. Ashur Edel Alani co ruled with Ashurbanipal from 630 BC, while an Assyrian governor named Kandalanu sat on the throne of Babylon on behalf of his king. Babylonia seemed secure until both Ashurbanipal and Kandalanu died in 627 BC, and Assyria spiraled into a series of internal civil wars which would ultimately lead to its destruction. An Assyrian general, Sin Shumu Lishir, revolted in 626 BC and declared himself king of Assyria and Babylon, but was promptly ousted by the Assyrian army loyal to King Ashur Edel Alani in 625 BC. Babylon was then taken by another son of Ashurbanipal Sin Shar Ishkan, who proclaimed himself king. His rule did not last long, however, and the Babylonians revolted. Nabopolassar seized the throne amid the confusion, and the Neo Babylonian dynasty was born. Babylonia as a whole then became a battleground between King Ashur Edel Alani and his brother Sin Shar Ishkan, who fought to and fro over the region. This anarchic situation allowed Nabopolassar to stay on the throne of the city of Babylon itself, spending the next three years undisturbed, consolidating his position in the city. However, in 623 BC, Sin Shar Ishkan killed his brother the king in battle at Nippur in Babylonia, seized the throne of Assyria, and then set about retaking Babylon from Nabopolassar. Nabopolassar was forced to endure Assyrian armies encamped in Babylonia over the next seven years. However, he resisted, aided by the continuing civil war in Assyria itself, which greatly hampered Sin Shar Ishkan's attempts to retake the parts of Babylonia held by Nabopolassar. Nabopolassar took Nippur in 619 BC, a key center of pro-Assyrianism in Babylonia, and by 616 BC, he was still in control of much of southern Mesopotamia. Assyria, still riven with internal strife, had by this time lost control of its colonies, who had taken advantage of the various upheavals to free themselves. The empire had stretched from Cyprus to Persia and the Caucasus to Egypt at its height. Nabopolassar attempted a counterattack, he marched his army into Assyria proper in 616 BC and tried to besiege Ashur and Arafa Kirkuk, but was defeated by Sin Shar Ishkan and driven back into Babylonia. A stalemate seemed to have ensued, with Nabopolassar unable to make any inroads into Assyria despite its greatly weakened state, and Sinshar Ishkan unable to eject Nabopolassar from Babylon due to the unremitting civil war in Assyria itself. However the balance of power was decisively tipped when Syaxares, ruler of the Iranian peoples the Medes, Persians and Parthians, and technically a vassal of Assyria, attacked a war-weary Assyria without warning in late 615 BC, sacking Arapha and Kalhu the biblical Nimrud. Then in 614 BC Syaxares, in alliance with the Scythians and Cimmerians, besieged and took ashore, with Nabopolassar remaining uninvolved in these successes. Nabopolassar II then made active alliances with other former subjects of Assyria, the Medes, Persians, Scythians and Cimmerians. During 613 BC the Assyrian army seems to have rallied and successfully repelled Babylonian, Median and Scythian attacks. However, in 612 BC Nabopolassar and the Median king Syaxares led a concentrated coalition of forces including Babylonians, Chaldeans, Medes, Persians, Scythians and Cimmerians in an attack on Nineveh. The size of the forces ranged against Assyria in its weakened state proved too much, and, after a bitter three-month siege, followed by house-to-house -house fighting, Nineveh finally fell, with Sin Shar Ishkan being killed defending his capital. An Assyrian general, Ashur Ubalit II, became king of Assyria amid the fighting. According to the Babylonian chronicle, he was offered the chance to bow in vassalage to the rulers of the alliance. However, he refused, and managed to fight his way free of Nineveh to set up a new capital at Haran. Nabopolassar, Syaxares, and their allies, then fought Ashur Ubalit II for a further five years, until Haran fell in 608 BC. After a failed attempt to retake the city, Ashur Ubalit II disappeared from the pages of history. 
The Egyptians under Pharaoh Necho II had invaded the Near East in 609 BC in a belated attempt to help their former Assyrian rulers. Nabopolassar with the help of his son and future successor Nebuchadnezzar II spent the last years of his reign dislodging the Egyptians who were supported by Greek mercenaries and the remnants of the Assyrian army from Syria, Asia Minor, Northern Arabia and Israel. Nebuchadnezzar proved to be a capable and energetic military leader, and the Egyptians, Assyrians and their mercenary allies were finally defeated by the Babylonians, Medes and Scythians at the Battle of Carchemish in 605 BC. The Babylonians were now left in possession of much of Assyria, with the northern reaches being held by the Medes. However, they appear to have made no attempt to occupy it, preferring to concentrate on rebuilding southern Mesopotamia. Topic. Nebuchadnezzar II 605–562 BC Topic. Nebuchadnezzar II became king after the death of his father. Nebuchadnezzar was a patron of the cities and a spectacular builder. He rebuilt all of Babylonia's major cities on a lavish scale. His building activity at Babylon was what turned it into the immense and beautiful city of legend. His city of Babylon covered more than three square miles, surrounded by moats and ringed by a double circuit of walls. The Euphrates flowed through the center of the city, spanned by a beautiful stone bridge. At the center of the city rose the giant ziggurat called Atamanonki, house of the frontier between heaven and earth, which lay next to the temple of Marduk. Nebuchadnezzar II conducted successful military campaigns in Syria and Phoenicia, forcing tribute from Damascus, Tyre and Sidon. He conducted numerous campaigns in Asia Minor, in the land of the Hatti. Like the Assyrians, the Babylonians had to campaign yearly in order to control their colonies. In 601 BC, Nebuchadnezzar II was involved in a major, but inconclusive, battle against the Egyptians. In 599 BC, he invaded Arabia and routed the Arabs at Kedar. In 597 BC, he invaded Judah and captured Jerusalem and deposed its king Jehoiakim. Egyptian and Babylonian armies fought each other for control of the Near East throughout much of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, and this encouraged King Zedekiah of Judah to revolt. After an 18-month siege, Jerusalem was captured in 587 BC, and thousands of Jews were deported to Babylon, and Solomon's temple was razed to the ground. By 572 Nebuchadnezzar was in full control of Babylonia, Assyria, Phoenicia, Israel, Philistinia, northern Arabia, and parts of Asia Minor. Nebuchadnezzar fought the pharaohs Semeticus II and Apres throughout his reign, and in 568 BC during the reign of pharaoh Amasis II, invaded Egypt itself. <laughs> Amel Marduk 562–560 BC Topic. Amel Marduk was the son and successor of Nebuchadnezzar II. He reigned only two years 562 to 560 BC. According to the Biblical Book of Kings, he pardoned and released Jehoiakim, king of Judah, who had been a prisoner in Babylon for 37 years. Allegedly, because Amel Marduk tried to modify his father's policies, he was murdered by Naraglasar, his brother-in-law. Naraglasar 560–556 BC Naraglasar appears to have been a more stable ruler, conducting a number of public works, restoring temples etc. He conducted successful military campaigns against Cilicia, which had threatened Babylonian interests. Naraglasar however reigned for only four years, being succeeded by the young Labashi Marduk. It is unclear if Naraglasar was himself a member of the Chaldean tribe, or a native of the city of Babylon. Labashi Marduk 556 BC Labashi Marduk was a king of Babylon, 556 BC, and son of Naraglasar. Labashi Marduk succeeded his father when still only a boy, after the latter's four-year reign. He was murdered in a conspiracy only nine months after his inauguration. Nabonidus was consequently chosen as the new king. Nabonidus 556–539 BC 
Topic Nabonidus Nabu -na. Id in Babylonian noble credentials are not clear, although he was not a Chaldean but from Assyria, in the city of Haran. He says himself in his inscriptions that he is of unimportant origins. Similarly, his mother, Ada Guppy, who lived to high age and may have been connected to the temple of the Akkadian moon god Sin in Haran, in her inscriptions does not mention her descent. His father was Nabu Balatsu Iqbi, a commoner, for long periods he entrusted rule to his son, Prince Belshazzar. He was a capable soldier but poor politician. All of this left him somewhat unpopular with many of his subjects, particularly the priesthood and the military class. The Marduk priesthood hated Nabonidus because of his suppression of Marduk's cult and his elevation of the cult of the moon god Sin. When Cyrus the Great conquered Babylonia, he portrayed himself as the savior chosen by Marduk to restore order and justice. To the east, the Persians had been growing in strength, and Cyrus the Great was very popular in Babylon itself. A sense of Nabonidus. Religiously based negative image survives in Jewish literature, such as the works of Josephus, and the Jews initially greeted the Persians as liberators. <laughs> Fall of Babylon in 549 BC Cyrus the Great, the Achaemenid king of Persia, revolted against his suzerain Astyages, king of Media, at Igbatana. Astyages' army betrayed him to his enemy, and Cyrus established himself as ruler of all the Iranic peoples, as well as the pre-Iranian Elamites and Gutians. In 539 BC, Cyrus invaded Babylon. Nabonidus sent his son Belshazzar to head off the huge Persian army, however, already massively outnumbered, Belshazzar was betrayed by Gobrias, governor of Assyria, who switched his forces over to the Persian side. The Babylonian forces were overwhelmed at the Battle of Opus. Nabonidus fled to Borsippa, and on 12 October, after Cyrus' engineers had diverted the waters of the Euphrates, the soldiers of Cyrus entered Babylon without fighting. Belshazzar in Xenophon is reported to have been killed, but his account is not held to be reliable here. Nabonidus surrendered and was deported. Gutian guards were placed at the gates of the Great Temple of Bel, where the services continued without interruption. Cyrus arrived in Babylon on 3 October, Gobrias having acted for him in his absence. Gobrias was then made governor of the province of Babylon. Cyrus claimed to be the legitimate successor of the ancient Babylonian kings and the avenger of Bel Marduk, who was assumed to be wrathful at the impiety of Nabonidus in removing the images of the local gods from their ancestral shrines, to his capital Babylon. Nabonidus, in fact, had excited a strong feeling against himself by attempting to centralize the religion of Babylonia in the Temple of Marduk at Babylon, and while he had thus alienated the local priesthoods, the military party despised him on account of his antiquarian tastes. He seems to have left the defense of his kingdom to others, occupying himself with the more congenial work of excavating the foundation records of the temples and determining the dates of their builders. The invasion of Babylonia by Cyrus was doubtless facilitated by the existence of a disaffected party in the state, as well in the presence of foreign exiles like the Jews. Accordingly, one of Cyrus' first acts was to allow these exiles to return to their homelands, carrying with them the images of their gods and their sacred vessels. The permission to do so was embodied in a proclamation, whereby the conqueror endeavored to justify his claim to the Babylonian throne. The feeling was still strong that none had a right to rule over Western Asia until he had been consecrated to the office by Bel and his priests, and accordingly, Cyrus henceforth assumed the imperial title of King of Babylon. Babylon, like Assyria, became a colony of Achaemenid Persia. See also List of kings of Babylon Cylinder of Nabonidus Timeline of the Assyrian Empire Topic. References Topic.